Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I would like to welcome you to ECE 3400, which is Georgia Tech's junior level elective on analog electronics. I have two courses involving analog circuits on YouTube already. One of them is on guitar amplification and effects, and the other is analog circuits for music synthesis. Although the guitar amplification and effects class mostly focuses on vacuum tubes, a portion of the course did look at effects pedals that use solid-state electronics, although most of that discussion operated at the operational amplifier level of abstraction. In my Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis class, we looked at bipolar junction transistors in the context of the Moog ladder filter, doing the heavy lifting in a voltage-to-current converter, and forming the core of an exponential voltage-to-current converter. But the vast majority of that class involves dealing with operational amplifiers in integrated circuits that you buy off the shelf, and operational transconductance amplifiers in integrated circuits that you buy off the shelf. Raw transistors didn't actually show up very often. ECE 3400 is all about the raw transistors. It's about the sort of things that are inside the chip. But it's not necessarily about the transistors that are in an integrated circuit. We have a specialized course, ECE 4430, for that. It's also about the kinds of circuits you would build out of discrete transistors, like the classic Neve 1073 microphone preamplifier. But transistors are transistors, and the theory we discuss in this class will be applicable both to the kinds of discrete transistors you use in your junior laboratory class and to the transistors on an integrated circuit. The official textbook is Microelectronic Circuit Design by Jaeger and Blaylock, but I'm not actually going to use this book, so you don't have to buy it. Nothing against this book, I'm just going to take a different approach, namely that of my colleague Marshall Leach. Marshall sadly passed away in 2010. Fortunately, the School of ECE at Georgia Tech left up his website under the name leechlegacy.ece.gotech.edu, and here you can find his page on ECE 3050 Analog Electronics, and 3050 is just an earlier name for ECE 3400. So this webpage and the various documents on it will really form the main quote-unquote textbook for this class. But I also plan to update it with some cutting-edge work by my colleague Jennifer Hassler and Brad Minch of the Olin College of Engineering. So I'm going to create an ECE 3400 playlist and put it here under the Analog Electronics Classes heading. But there is some material that is part of 3400 that's more general that I use in several classes, so I've broken that out into separate playlists. One is EC Design Fundamentals. This mostly reviews what you've seen in previous classes, but it reviews it from the standpoint in how to think about circuits beyond just the mechanical manipulations. So I want you to watch analog information in circuits, three op-amp circuits all electrical and computer engineers should know by heart, op-amp voltage subtractors and superpositional thinking, calculus with op-amps differentiation and integration, passive signal summing mixing using only resistors, and active signal summing mixing using op-amps in inverting configurations. Watch them in that order, and then either before those videos or after those videos or interspersed with those videos, watch the five examples in this superposition with dependent sources playlist. And other than watching the Thevenin and Equivalents video last, you can pretty much watch these in any order. This is partially a test of the efficacy of so-called clickbait titles, and sadly it turns out that indeed videos with titles like Circuits Textbooks Lie to You and Your Circuits Professor Was Wrong About This get clicked on a lot more than videos with more straightforward titles, and a title with words like Circuit Analysis Secrets in it, along with a descriptive title, gets an amount of views that's somewhere in the middle. These five videos each cover an example of using superposition with dependent sources that's fundamental to how Marshall approached teaching the analog circuits material. Marshall's general idea is that you can, in fact, deactivate dependent sources when using superposition. This is something that the textbooks tell you you can't do, 
but it does work, and in many cases, it yields extremely elegant solutions. The second pillar of Marshall's way of teaching analog electronics makes extensive use of Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. I love this paragraph where Professor Leach writes, Contemporary computer technology has had a profound effect on circuit analysis and design. A user with little understanding of the operation of a circuit can write the node equations and use a software tool to solve the resulting matrix. This might lead some to believe that the traditional discipline of circuit analysis is superfluous. However, computers do not design circuits. Engineers do. The traditional analysis of a circuit provides an insight into its operation that can probably never be provided solely by a computer. Mic drop. This approach will seem familiar to anyone who's taken my guitar amplification and effects class. And in fact, I got the idea of applying equivalent circuits to tubes from seeing the way Marshall applied them to transistors. As far as prerequisites go, I'm going to assume that you have a basic background in linear circuit analysis along the lines of Georgia Tech's ECE 2040. And if you're a student taking this class for credit, then that will have been enforced by our prerequisite structure. If you're someone watching this from the broader community and need that background in order to follow along, I highly recommend the Coursera courses Linear Circuits 1 DC Analysis and Linear Circuits 2 AC Analysis, taught by my colleague Bonnie Ferry. And you should follow that up with her Coursera class, Introduction to Electronics. I'm also going to assume that you've already seen a little bit about circuits with diodes and transistors, both bipolar junction transistors and MOSFETs. This is enforced by the prerequisite ECE 3040. Now, 3040 has a lot of details about device physics that I'm not going to get into this class and you don't really need, but I'm going to assume that you've seen the idea of a small signal model and that you've seen some simple one transistor amplifier configurations such as the common emitter and common source amplifiers. If you need to review any of this material, I highly recommend checking out the lectures page on the ECE 3040 website by my colleague Alan Doolittle, particularly lectures 15, 20, 26, and 27. If you're a Georgia Tech student doing a Bachelor of Science in Music Technology with an electrical and computer engineering concentration, then the ECE courses for non-majors, ECE 3710 Circuits and Electronics, along with the additional material you pick up in ECE 3741, the Instrumentation and Electronics Laboratory, should be enough for you to be able to follow along okay if you're interested, although our formal prerequisite structure unfortunately precludes you from taking it for credit. That said, if you're somebody from the broader community that's watching these lectures on YouTube and you haven't covered transistors and diodes in depth before, go ahead and tag along. I do assume that you know basic linear circuit theory, but I'll be presenting the equations that govern the voltages and currents of these various elements essentially from scratch, so you should be able to pick up a lot of themes along the way.